top tip has initially got to be that you have got to get yourself somehow into the technology level and it, it can it can work with a fairly basic non-expensive entry level to do the work my name is phil harding and i'm a music producer i've been in the music industry for 40 years or so and i started back in the early 70s at the marquee studios in london and I'm here at the University of Huddersfield today to give a talk about my career and my new book, which is called Pop Music Production. And by the late 70s, I was fairly well enough trained for the studio to allow me to work with commercial clients. So amongst the first things that I engineered commercially were bands like The Clash and Killing Joke from the punk revolution. I quickly moved on to getting into pop because I met Pete Walton. Uh, I mixed and engineered a lot of the Stop Egg and Woman hits, uh, artists ranging from Mel and Kim, to Cassidy, Kylie, through to Jason Donovan and so on. So I've taken that journey from engineering, co-producing, mixing through to, to full production by the 90s. And uh, we worked on all three uh, E17 albums, uh, then worked with Boyzone, uh, 911, lots of boy bands, and that's led me to to where I am today. So um, I'm co-chair of an industry education group called James. We accredit courses like this at Huddersfield University and other universities around the country. And uh, and I go out and do talks and guest lectures. And I still keep my hand in by producing and mixing. Uh, and I have a current pop production team. We do retro mixes mainly, uh, and we're called PJS Productions. The term music producer is, is one that's got many different definitions, and uh, it's quite interesting how different people view it, but uh, quite an easy explanation that, that, that many people understand is that as a director of a film or a TV show, he's basically directing the actors and in control of what's going on creatively, so is the case with a music producer. So people often get film producers and music producers muddled up. Film producer is someone that uh, invests and comes up with the ideas and, uh, and then works with the director. So the producer is generally the person that's in between uh, the artists and their creativity and the industry people, which can be managers, record company and so on. So you're very much the conduit for both creativity and commercialism. At the end of the day, the music producer and creative engineers are in service to both sides that I just described there, the artists uh, and the industry people that are often the ones employing them. Most producers these days have had to learn to be as diverse as possible. So you've got to have all the technical skills, uh, you've got to have the creative knowledge and music knowledge to understand what the artists want and what they're trying to achieve. It's probably the most important thing in the process. But at the same time, you've got to be a diplomat, uh, you've got to be a business person, able to negotiate. So there's a lot more to it than just the creativity. Uh, and the whole networking and teamwork scenario, there's not that many producers these days that work in isolation. They've generally got teams around them. So if you want to be a music producer, you should be looking to be collaborating and be part of the team. So the advice there really is to look uh, and research who's produced the records that you like, no matter how independent, how small or how big. Once you find one or two producers that you think, yeah, that's the kind of creative thing that we're going for as an artist, then make contact, uh, invite them to a gig or track down them or their manager. You know, on social media these days, most producers uh, are very approachable. Most of us have got our own websites. Most of us have got some kind of public email or Facebook page where contact can be made. So if you were looking for me, you'd look up Phil Harding, music producer, and you'd quickly get to uh, a fair bits of social media and a website. But, gives an email to contact me. So that's an average story for most producers these days. The 
the initial logical thing is how can I upgrade my equipment? How can I be more competitive with, with what I see other people doing? But possibly a couple of other interesting ways might be either offering an act or taking an act that you're working with or even your own idea and production into a larger studio so that you can put onto your CV, you know, I've worked Abbey Road or, or uh, Real World or you know, one of these great iconic studios and, and that would count for a lot on a CV of a young producer engineer in terms of young artists looking to work with someone like yourself. One of the most important things for young producers and uh, people coming into the industry is networking and getting yourself out there. So my other recommendation would be to consider paying to go to some conferences. Intense uh, two or three day conferences, music conferences, whatever your genre or subject area is, there's, there's always going to be some going on somewhere. And it may not reap immediate rewards, but in my experience, that type of thing, people always ask about, well, how can I network? I mean, the most basic networking you can do is with local musicians, local gigs, and then start working towards what I'm talking about there with conferences and so on. The simplest thing these days is obviously at least a laptop, an interface, some speakers, so you're beyond just headphones. You know, that's, that's your minimal setup, really. And the great thing with keeping it portable is you can go to other people, but you'll want somewhere at home or somewhere like that to set that up yourself as well. The next vital thing I would say is that you've got to be prepared to be working in a team. Try and find what your element is, your, your particular skill. Hopefully, if you find what your top skills are, you'll soon realise what you're lacking. So that makes it obvious, so those are the type of people I need around me to make up the team.